In today's video, we're going to be checking out Pascal Siakam and how he is absolutely dominating the NBA right now. He just got his second triple-double of this season, so let's get down and let's check him out because he's doing extremely well and we can all learn from him. Okay, so the first thing that really stands out is his ability to pass. He's always trying to pass and hit that lead man in transition, which gets him a lot of easy assists. We see this time and time again. He attacks the middle of the paint, and then he's able to get that pass over to the lead man so that that lead man, in this case Scotty Barnes, can get an easy dunk. And because he's such a passing threat, especially to cutters as we see here, players will actually play off of him so much that he will have open three-point shots as we see right here, and he's actually a pretty good high percentage shooter. If you want to be able to shoot the basketball better like Pascal Siakam, make sure to check out the link down below to the hardest basketball shooting workout. Pascal Siakam is also very good at getting that ball into the paint and because he's such a high percentage shooter in the paint, he will collapse the defense. In this case, all five players are inside the key. He understands that so that when that happens, he can kick that ball out to his teammates for open three-point shots. Pascal Siakam is actually such a major threat to get to the basket that whenever he crosses over that ball, most of the time the defense will actually back up. They are afraid of him either doing a spin move or crossing over to attack the basket. Here he could have technically gone down middle according to that defender, even though that defender may or may not know that the middle is clogged up, which is why he took that big step back. Whenever the de defense takes a step back, Pascal Siakam will always chuck up one of these shots and because he's got such a high percentage he'll hit them. He's also very good at pulling that help or I mean that hedge man and to continue keeping that hedge man on him which usually when after a screen is a mismatch and here he's got a massive speed mismatch here but also to score look at his chicken wing that he has I call that a chicken wing basically what you're doing is you're slightly pushing off with your elbow and not extending your arm as soon as you extend that arm it's a foul that will give you that extra distance so that you can pull up for that shot now while I disagree in most cases that Pascal Siakam needs to really cut down on his dribbles. I, I, I agree that he needs to cut down his dribbles. I, I disagree with him dribbling so much, but the nice thing with him is the fact that when he takes these dribbles, so he one, two, three, and then he attacks the rim. Yes, while he's staying under three dribbles when he's on the tack, he dribbles up one, and then goes one, two, three, and then he attacks. That's four dribbles. That's why in the playoffs he tends to get double teamed more often. He takes a lot of dribbles, but now with his passing ability, getting those kick out passes, what happens is defenses are most likely not going to be defending him as a double team. And then when he does these spin moves, he's pretty much patented the spin move because he's just so good at them. The fact that when he does this spin, I really want you to see his left arm. When he makes this crossover, or when sometimes he crosses over here, he just gathers. But watch his elbow go out. That elbow will hook that defender behind him, which then... There's nobody on this right side to be able to block this layup, which allows him to have that open layup. See, the thing with Pascal Siakam, that's one, two, three, four, five, five dribbles. He finally gets that double team, and when that double team hits, he's able to get the passes out to his teammates. So even though... I am against players dribbling so much in the same spot doing literally pretty much nothing. Guess what? If you're a good enough passer and you can draw a double team just by doing that, guess what? You're going to get a lot of assists and that's how Pascal Siakam gets so many assists. Now for those younger players who I coach and train and, and sometimes will say, well, that little small push off will be a foul. Well, guess what? It's not because this man is also moving. He doesn't own the ground that he's on. He owns the ground if he was planted, but this small little elbow push off right there makes him go flying away. Watch the referee. Watch what he calls. He calls a blocking foul and one. The reason for that is because now 
you've created contact, you were going in this direction anyways, the defense does not own the land, if you go through a moving defender, it's a foul on them every single time. Which means that you can get and one baskets by just creating contact yourself. Plus, by making that contact, you're creating space so that you can score at a very high level. Also by being patient. Watch this. He attacks the rim, comes to a jump stop. This allows these two players to go flying right by him. He's able to pivot back and get an easy layup. The nice thing with a jump stop is you could use either foot as a pivot foot. You have to choose one, but you could use either one. But also, it gives you balance so that you could kick out pass to other players who are open, or you can just go up for the basket yourself. He's also got really good court vision. Here he's dribbling the ball up the middle of the court. These two defenders are not defending the fast break as they should. One of these guys needs to get low, one of these guys needs to get high, but they don't do that. This guy tried to go high. He should have communicated for that guy to go low. Again, didn't happen. Pascal Siakam was able to hit Delano Banton in that fast break and was able to finish with a dunk. Also, I would not I, I wouldn't be surprised if Pascal Siakam gets 10 steals in the game sometime this season. While in the game that he just recently got a triple double, it was points, rebounds, assists, but with his defensive vision and length to get passes like that, it's going to really help. And then he leads the pass off of that steal. Look, he leads it to where he wants that player to go because he's able to be a quarterback to know where the defense is. Go there, go get the ball, and get your dunk. And that's how you should lead the break. I hope that this video has helped you become a better basketball player. Make sure to go check out my hardest basketball shooting workout down in the description below. And I'll see you guys again next time.